Oh, where do I start, Sarah? Oh my gosh. Um, first and foremost, pocket rocket, global traveler, super awesome, bright and bubbly, ah, smiles a little bit, um, game changer. I don't know, I could probably go on and on and on. And I had the, obviously had the privilege to meet you in Hawaii at one of our company's events. And I must say it was an absolute pleasure. So I'm so excited to have you on board here today just to share your story, your background, what got you into this business, what you've done before, and just everything like that. So, you know, let's just start. You know, tell me a bit about yourself. <laughs> awesome to be here. Again, it was so good meeting you in Hawaii, and what a place to do so. Seriously, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so I actually started travel blogging about six years now, which is crazy to think about. And um, it took me a long time to build up a following. Um, I've traveled the whole world at this point. You know, I've been to 81 countries, also in continents. And I started, you know, writing my way through it, which is awesome until you think about the fact that it's really hard to make money via blogging, which I didn't think about when I first got into that. Um, I sort of always thought that, hey, everybody has a travel blog, it'd be really easy, you know, throw some articles up there, pitch some companies, and I'll make it. <laughs> and it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> um, so I very quickly found out that it's much harder than anybody thought. And so there I was traveling around the world and had no idea how I was actually going to make an income. And that was really tough. And that's what I was doing for about three years online. I was just sort of using my savings. I was bartending in between all of my trips, crazy hours, and just sort of hoping for the best, hoping my money would last. And I was blogging and hoping, hey, maybe it'll work. And it never worked. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know you were saying, like, when you talk about bartending, I know you mentioned it was like 80 hour weeks or something like that. So yeah. you were seriously dedicated to the cause. It was like, this is going to happen. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. And Oh, yeah. I was traveling the world no matter what, you know, income, no income. But Making an income online was, was definitely, you know, the end goal, definitely preferable. Uh, the 80 hour bartender, bartending weeks were killer to say the least. They screw up your whole routine. You lose your sleep, you lose your exercise and that all spirals into everything else. And it's just not very healthy. Yeah. So before getting into like, if I just take a step back between say like high school and starting that, did you actually go into a, a traditional sort of a office job or anything like that? Or did you go straight into, I want to be traveling the world. I'm just going to work out how to do it. This blog thing seems to be the craze. You know, I'll go get a job at the bar. Um, yeah, well, I definitely went the, the unconventional route. You know, I studied abroad during university and I actually did that twice. Um, the first time was in 2011 and the second time was in 2013 mm. and in 2013 it was my final semester at university I was in Argentina and I was like okay this travel thing it's really nice final semester you know my classes were easy I was traveling around all of South America but I sort of knew that it wouldn't last or I thought that it wouldn't last so I walked out of my Spanish final. I trekked through Patagonia, spent Christmas in Antarctica and New Year's Eve in Rio, which is just <laughs> absolutely nuts. I was like, I'm going out with a bang. This was amazing, like best way to end university and segue into the whole desk job thing. And um, so I did that. I came home, I uh, went straight to interviews, interviewing in New York City. You know, I went to a prestigious school in New York City. So sort of the way the path goes is you then get a nice job in New York City. And um, so I figured I'd follow that route. I went on all these interviews and I got offered most of the positions that I was applying for, but they were offering me no money, like not even enough money to cover my rent for the year, much less my groceries or any social life or anything. And I was not about that. You know, they also wanted me. And then at first I was like, okay, I'll work five days a week and then I'll supplement that by bartending on the weekends. And then I found out that the office jobs wanted me available and on call on weekends. And I was like, Haha, this is so not, so not happening. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so then I was like, all right, I'm going to bartend. Um, I'll bartend three days a week because I'll make more in three, three days than I will working at an office job for seven days. So I was doing that in New York City for a while. And then um, my plan was to take off and teach English in the Galapagos Islands um, that fall. I was like, all right, I'll still be productive. I'll still, you know, do the right thing by society's mm. eyes. You know, I had my teaching certifications. I was then using my degree in a conventional way. It was great. That fell through. Uh, I fell through three weeks before I was supposed to leave. And so I sort of felt like my life was falling apart. Like everything that I had planned for this year after college, from a desk job to teaching and everything was just trashed. And I didn't know what to do. And so I sort of took off and planned a trip to Africa. And I went to Africa for two months. And uh, long story short, my travels haven't stopped since then. And that was uh, fall of 2014. And uh, I never looked back. I have not interviewed for one desk job since. I took my travel vlogging and now I've learned how to work online. And I just went with that because it was so much more fulfilling than ever slaving for somebody else. Yep, I can completely <laughs> understand. And I I can't get over that the, the pays that they were paying or offering anyway in New York was not even gonna pay the rent and things like that. I'm not right. too sure how they expect people to live. And you know, I'm sure that's a fairly common thing as well. Oh, yeah. um, and yeah. then I'm sure there's probably plenty of people that that end up taking those jobs because of the prestigious as aspect to it and not necessarily going, well, there's another option out there and that side of things as well. So, but before I get into the online business side of things, cause I'm curious to know a little bit more about that. What I want to know is what does traveling mean to you? Oh my goodness. That's like such a loaded question. What does traveling mean to me? To me, traveling is freedom. Traveling is getting to know people, to, to grow yourself because you have all these life experiences that you can never, ever have anywhere else unless you're on the road, unless you're navigating cities where you don't speak the language and trying to communicate with people. And you can't even count to 10 in that language, even if you try. And you're learning about these cultures and these customs and things that, you know, I feel like we all sort of live in our own little bubble of what's comfortable for us. And sometimes it's really, really, really important to get out of that bubble because that to me is where change happens. That to me is where you, you grow as a human being. And that's so important. And it provides a lot of world perspective, a lot of perspective on life that I feel like a lot of people lack today. And so I always try to encourage everybody, whether you're scared or not, to get out there and go and travel because even though it might not be as glamorous as it looks, because it definitely isn't sometimes, um, you learn so much both about yourself and others that is just so important mm. to, to everything, every aspect of your life. And so that's the biggie for me. You know, it's the, the fact that I have the ability to go around travel the world, meet these people and be introduced to these cultures is, is a true blessing because if I stayed in New York City and stayed at that desk job, my perspective would be definitely a little off. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do agree. And I think it's, um, you highlight so many different points there and I think it's why people should travel and, and everything as well. So, um, so with the, with the blog, so was it, you know, it's kind of that chicken and egg question. Like, did the blog come first or did the traveling come first? You know, it's funny. So I, so like I said, I studied abroad twice. So the very mm. first time I studied abroad, I was like, all right, I'm going to make a blog and it's just going to be for my family and it's going to be great. It's going to document my whole trip. And I looked back at it and it has photos with no captions and no paragraphs of writing. <laughs> so that was blog one. Then, um, obviously looking back on it, you know, that's just terrible. Mm. And so then when I studied abroad the second time, I was like, all right, we're going to do blog two and it's going to be better. And when I was preparing to leave for Buenos Aires, I was looking through NYU's scholarships and I saw that you could apply for a scholarship to keep a travel blog. And mm. I applied for the scholarship, thought nothing of it though, because NYU is known never to give scholarships. So I sort of, I remember I typed up my application while I was on the train home. So like really casual environment. <laughs> I almost didn't take it seriously just because like I said, I knew NYU never granted scholarships. Fast forward, I won the scholarship. 
<laughs> so um, I was rewarded $3,000 to keep a travel blog and to do 30 posts throughout my semester in Buenos Aires. And those posts were distributed throughout NYU faculty and NYU students. Wow. So because I was given some money for it, I knew that I actually had to to do it, to do it properly and not the way that I did my blog in Florence. <laughs> and so um, I really documented all my trips and that's when I started writing proper paragraphs and putting more than one photo and, you know, captioning stuff and people yep. could actually see where I was and what I was doing. And I realized very quickly that I loved having a document of what I was doing. I loved having something I could look back on and be like, oh my gosh, that memory, Yeah. you know, um, because, it's so easy to even get caught up in travel and forget those little things and forget that time that someone said something that made you laugh. I mean, it just happened to me. I, I look back through my blog all the time and I was just looking back on, on a post I did on, on Africa and um, I did a quote at the end that a friend had said about me and it had me absolutely cracking up. I completely forgot about the quote, completely forgot about the moment and it was brought right back. So that's, it's little things like that that are really cool. Yep. And so that was the start of the travel blog. So the plan, obviously, was that it was just going to stay, you know, the travel blog for Buenos Aires and for South America. It was entitled Blonde Brains Buenos Aires. <laughs> and that was that. But then when I, when I was in Africa, well, right before Africa, I decided to rebrand. I was like, well, I'm going to Africa. I can't have it be called Blonde, bra blonde Brains Buenos Aires. I'm not in Buenos Aires anymore. Yeah. I have to rebrand. And so that's when the Five Foot Traveler sort of came about. And I was like, all right, let's see how this blogging thing goes. And so from then on, it's been the Five Foot Traveler and hasn't changed and isn't changing. And I, I've grown it to be a pretty solid brand, which is amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, definitely, definitely. Now, the curiosity thing here, because there's a lot of people that, uh, that do watch these and they're starting to look into the online world and, you know, business online and, and everything like that. And you talk about obviously getting that scholarship to be able to write a blog. Was that kind of, um, well, let me take one step back. Some people don't believe that it's possible to be able to make money using the internet. Sure. Now, I don't know what your beliefs was when it comes to the starting the blog. I know you said, you know, there's this thing that people can do and they can make money and they can travel all the world. Um, but even still going back probably a good couple of years then, like blogging, I guess, was just starting to get a little bit more common and, and everything like that. So I guess there wasn't a lot of proof out there in the way that people are actually making the money. So getting that scholarship to actually write the um, blogs for the, the 30 days, was that kind of like your first going, oh, you know what, I can make money out of this and starting to build that belief that the internet is, is something to actually take seriously these days as a way to make money. Well, oh, that's such a loaded question. Um, I, I don't know if I noticed that, acknowledged that at the time, to be honest. Okay. I think at the time I was like, oh my gosh, I was just giving money <laughs> to do something that's really cool. Um, but definitely in hindsight, that was a huge push for me. And it's sort of, it, it's due to that that I even checked out the online realm in general. I mean, had I not won that scholarship, my blog would have looked the same as it did in Italy with no captions and no writing. And I would be nowhere, nowhere near where I am today. I never would have pursued it and I'd be sitting in a desk job. Yep. Um, I think that, hmm, what do I even, how do I even want to approach that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that the big thing with that, with the, that initial scholarship is that it gave me the push to at least explore the online world. Okay. So that's when I started looking into other bloggers and people that were making it and how they were making it and what they were doing and who they were partnering with and sort of the technique as to, okay, this is potentially a viable, like a real job, not just a scholarship. Now, how do I make that transfer yeah. from, from a scholarship, like fun little thing to a viable source of income? Yeah. Uh, which is, it was interesting, you know, and it was very mind opening, uh, eye opening because, you know, a lot of people don't know about the internet. A lot of people, you know, you know, your social media networks, of course. I mean, we, we all know those, but you don't actually know the technique behind what goes into making an income online, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and blogging as well is also a fairly niche thing. Not everybody's going to go and start a blog and, and, and start writing, but I know a, a couple of people myself that, that do write some very successful blogs and 
I know that they use, I've had a, back when I started my online journey, I was starting to look into them, like, you know, how are they being able to live that life? And, you know, the, the whole affiliate marketing and that sort of business model really starts to shine through to be able to give value to people and being able to offer a, a product or service that, that can um, complement what it is that they share on their blog. And, and I guess that's a good sort of segue into, you know, talking about the business that we're both in. You know, the, the education and the products can be able to teach people to start building a business online without having to, you know, start from where you did with, you know, writing a blog and then building that up. And, you know, that's a couple of years. Exp- yeah. I don't recommend going the route that I went, <laughs> just throwing it out there. It uh, gave me many a headache, many, many uh, lost nights of sleep. And it was tough. I really wish that I had had somebody there to guide me and help me figure it all out because it was not easy. Um, And still, you know, it wasn't until I sort of found this team that we're a part of that I was like, oh, people could help me. And this is easy, a lot easier than than it's been the last bunch of years. (laughs) Uh, Definitely, you know, made me want to bang my head into a wall, wished I figured it out, was introduced to, to our system, you know, years ago, but yeah. you live and you learn. Yes, <laughs> that you do. And look, I could say the exact same thing, but from a different background. So I completely yeah. agree. I, I fell head <laughs> yeah. over heels. I've got people that are going through the, with the, working with their coaches at the moment and they're, they're having the aha moments, which I think is absolutely wonderful. It's the best part. It's yeah. the best part. Absolutely. And on that, like, obviously, you know, when you do start with the the training and things like that, there are coaches there to be able to support you and educate and and teach you a little bit more about this online world. Like, what are some of the things coming in from that blog world where you've got that experience of being online and then you're in this business and all of a sudden the the coaches are teaching you about some other stuff that, you know, how to create, I guess, a bigger platform than just what your blog is. Like, what were some of the, the aha moments there for yourself? Yeah, so I realized very quickly that I thought I knew a lot more than I did. (laughs) Um, I realized that I was missing out on a lot. And um, for me, I mean, gosh, there's so many aha moments. I mean, first, being put in, having my coach who has made millions online, that's huge because that right there is somebody that you personally know that has had success in the realm. It's not reading about the person. It's not, you know, stalking blogs. It's somebody you're chatting with the same way we're chatting now. And that's really cool. And it's extra cool knowing that they did that using the same system that we did. Hmm. So you have somebody that coming at you firsthand that has already gone through all the struggles, teaching you what they learned. You know, I just said, you live and you learn. They're teaching us what they learned. And that's really helpful. And so, you know, I've learned everything from, traffic to social media strategies that I never thought that I thought that I knew and <laughs> apparently I didn't um, things like automation I've even learned you know just how to have different conversations with people to figure out what they actually want out of life or out of their job or out of their blog mm-hmm. and um, there, there's a certain way to go about everything and they sort of teach you all of that and they also teach you to take it take it step by step because Sometimes it's so easy to just throw, you want to throw yourself into everything and you want to know every question, you want every answer and you ask all the questions because you're so excited and that's great. Except one thing I've noticed is you really have to slow down and sort of follow, follow their guidance, follow the guidance of your coach, follow the guidance of your mentor and sort of go at their pace, yep. which as frustrating as it could be, I know there's a reason for it and yes. that, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And I guess in what you were sharing there about the coach having already made millions online at the same time, like when we were in Maui just recently for the the three day event with the the company, it's, you know, just to be able to sit in the same room as as people who have earned, whether it be a couple of millions and I'm sure there's, you know, in a couple of years time, there's going to be something that we could probably sort tens of millions. Probably. Um, And well, actually there was, um, you know, the big man himself. So (laughs) there's just to be able to sit there and be able to have these conversations with people. And, you know, at the end of the day, we hear it all the time and it sounds silly when you say it, but they're just like you and I. Oh, totally. Like, but yet you you sit behind that computer screen and you think, oh my gosh, he's just, you know, a hundred grand a month, like top income. The, you know, 109,000 in one week is their biggest week. $109,000. You know, but yet you can walk up to them and, and if you didn't know anything about that, you know, there is no, 
there is no front there is no anything they're just two beautiful people and you know and there are people there that are that are willing to be able to help and you know want to see you succeed in everything as well and that's one of the things that i do fall in love with this business and at the same time you're not pigeonholed into just like okay so my background being in network marketing right so when you're in network marketing you Network marketing companies do not like you to be able to talk about or promote other companies. And especially if you get caught um, having people from that main company coming to the new like, company, you can lose really? your spot in the other company. Yes. Network marketing companies are very okay. um, protective, I guess we could say in that regard. So, you know, you don't have, you, you get pigeonholed, like this is what you've got and this is all you've got to talk about. Whereas what I love about this education is, Look, if you, want to, if you want to use this education to build this business, then cool, go for it. If you want to build this business, cool, go for it. If you want to go and create your own empire, go do it. It doesn't really matter. So you're not pigeonholed to just that one thing. Of course that, not. That's one thing that really stands out to me. And, and I guess that's where being able to connect with these, um, these top marketers to just to get those little bits of, you know, those golden nuggets um, and it might even be like one of the guys shared in autoresponders, you know, just resending to the people that didn't open your email, like something simple like that could be a massive game changer for your business. Super helpful. Yeah. I mean, gosh, I picked up so much the, at the event. It was really, it was really invaluable. I mean, I think I have an entire notebook full of notes. Um, and I mean, I've even caught myself quoting the people that spoke on our stage because some things you just don't forget, <laughs> you know, they actually leave an impact and they inspire you to go and do more and make your own brand. And so for me, going back to my blog, it's fantastic because I've been able to take everything that I've learned in this company the, through the, their education system and apply it to my blog to grow my own, my own brand. And that's really unique for sure and yeah. really special and extremely helpful since I did the whole struggling blogger thing for a while. Uh, so it's, not, it's really nice that they're supportive and encouraging of everything. And you don't find that with a lot of companies. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I just needed to share about the network marketing thing. It's <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a, these two are completely different things. And, you know, it's, that's where, like, I've got a few people that are coming through at the moment from network marketing. They're like, oh, my God. <laughs> so if anybody's in network marketing, come and talk to me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going into it. Don't worry. I no, like to like yes, go and talk a little too much. I think. <laughs> hey, I like it, get out of the bubble. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, from a, I, I know we've kind of touched on it all, and we've kind of got, but I just want to highlight it a little bit more. Like, how is getting involved with this particular business? How has it changed your life? Well, in a nice short little. I don't bartend anymore. I don't so, bartend anymore. Yep. Like I said, I have not gone on one interview for a desk job and uh, I travel the world full time. And so since I joined this company, I took off to Australia. I spent a month on a beach in Australia and that's how I worked. I literally made my income for the month of February sitting on a beach in the sun, in a bathing suit, just laying there <laughs> on my phone, doing my work. And it was fantastic. And, you know, had you told me even a year ago that that was possible, I would have laughed in your face. I would have told you that you were absolutely ridiculous, that I tried everything on the planet online and that, you know, it was just not going to happen, not possible. Yeah. And then there I was laughing at myself as I'm seeing my, my month's income roll in as I'm laying on the beach. Yeah. You know, I don't think a lot of people could say that. <laughs> um, and it's really cool and it's really amazing to see the system play out you know because of course people have their hesitations with working online i think we all we all do at some point at least in the beginning but and i mean i was and i was super skeptical i was super skeptical so to see all of this play out before my eyes and then to see it end up in my bank account and to know that i was somewhere that i loved somewhere that i wanted to be working when i wanted to be working working where I wanted to be working and relaxing more than I'd ever relaxed in my entire life while making more per month is I still have trouble wrapping my mind around it <laughs> because it just doesn't, it almost like doesn't seem logical. It doesn't seem like it should be that way because we're yeah. so used to our, our own cultural, 
cultures and customs yep. and things that are grilled into us as we grow up. Um, but I mean, literally I'd never been so relaxed and yet I had one of my most profitable months. And so, mm. you know, some, something's right there. And, uh, it's unfortunate that a lot of people do miss out on that because yeah. that feeling is something that should be replicated. I hope everybody gets that feeling at some point yes. because it's wild. I mean, I, I travel the world full time and now because of this system, because of the education that I'm receiving, I know that I could travel the world full time without having to worry about when my next check is bank, uh, when my next check is coming in. I don't have to worry about scheduling around like, oh, well, summer is high season for bartending. So I should be home for like two months of that. So I can make a little more cash and get on the road. Like that doesn't even cross my mind anymore. And yep. that's really amazing. And, and I'm really, really grateful that I found the system when I did. Mm. Um, because I'm able to live the life that I want right now. Yep. And at age 24, that's a true blessing. You know, a lot of people can't say that. That's true. And I'm really grateful for it. Yeah. And there's, there's two things in there that I, I want to just sort of point out as well. Like there's the, obviously the automation of this, of the products or the, the business oh, itself, yeah. sorry. So realistically, you don't have to be doing much. You can just do your own marketing. You can do your own conversations in your own time. And then, and all of the, the, the pay and everything like that happens as, as part of the automation of the, oh, yeah. the I, uh, I, think I had money phenomenal. rolling in from sunrise. I was out at a sunrise walk. Yeah. I, I was on the beach three or four times watching Gilmore girls another time <laughs> and sleeping and sleeping three times, something <laughs> like that. And I was just like, what is this? this and this is, is when, amazing. yeah. And this is when the emails are being coming in saying you've been yeah. you've learned such and such. Exactly. <laughs> Yes. It's so cool. Cause like everybody talks about, you know, you put the system on automation after you figure out, you know, after you go through the training with your coaches and nobody really knows what that means in the beginning. Yep. So then to see that play out and to see that all the things, all the puzzle pieces that you put in place work yep. in your favor and work while you're sleeping is just insane. Absolutely I, insane. I remember yeah. the first time that I woke up to one of those emails and I was like, yeah, this this works. <laughs> yeah, it's, super, it's super cool. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> and like the other part, like you talk about the skepticism, um, you know. And I guess that's where I just want to highlight for those that are skeptical. Because personally, for me coming into this business, I wasn't skeptical because I've already had my back back experience of of everything else. But um, I was still inquisitive. So that's where that, that $1 14 day full access with the coach is a really, really beneficial thing because it gives you the chance to have a look. Cause I don't know about you. Like when, when I explain people, you know, what is this business? It's education. What's the education It's in around business marketing and sales. Okay. What's the product? It's education. It's I, I, <laughs> exactly. I don't know about you, but I go around in circles when I'm <laughs> explaining this to people. Always. It's because, always a circle talk. Because oh. the problem that I find with this, well, it's not really the problem, but what I find with this is that it isn't, it isn't normal. Like I'm talking to people that have, as I said, from network marketing background. So they're like, they want to know, okay, it's shakes and pills. That's okay, cool. I can work yeah. with that. That's tangible. But when you start talking about this business is education, people go a little bit, I don't know. It, it just, it seems, it just doesn't seem. It's not tangible. It's not exactly. a physical product. Yeah. So that's where I love. And I, I will edge, um, encourage people to just do this $1 thing. You're going to have that access for that 14 days. You're going to be having your coach talking you through it. They're going to have like, and this is the bigger part. They're going to have a piece of paper or a slide or an audio or a video for you to be able to go for, to be able to learn or learn from. And once you read through that, once you see the diagrams, once you hear the way it's explained, then there's like the, Oh my gosh. Exactly. Those sorts it's of things. Like you, so. you just need to, to believe in yourself enough, put down the one dollar, go through through your steps, and then it all makes sense. Yeah. Like that's sort of what I've what I've come to terms with. It's like you just need that little belief in yourself and start yep. to sort of put because like as I said, I was a skeptic. So it was sort of putting that aside, believing in yourself, knowing what you wanted, knowing the dreams you were chasing that you wanted to achieve, and realizing that that outweighed your skepticism. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I tell every skeptic, you know, it was me too, but try, 
try to just ignore that for the time being because it all comes together i promise it does and that that skepticism goes straight out the window oh yeah oh yeah absolutely it goes out the out the window very quickly so, yeah wonderful it's from oh, i don't know about it to oh my gosh i wish i found this sooner <laughs> <laughs> exactly. well you heard me i said I, I wish i found this years and years ago yeah you know, me, saved me such a headache. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, on that, it's a nice way to sort of start wrapping it up as far as like, if there are people that are sitting on the fence watching this and listening to what we have to share and, you know, curious about starting their own online business and not too sure if they really want us to put down that dollar, like, what would you say to, you, what would you say to them? Like, what's a couple of words that you would say? Well, A, you need to believe in yourself. You know, something brought you into the idea of, oh, hey, I'm curious. Curiosity is the first thing. If you're curious, you're gonna continue being curious if you don't go for it. And having that thing looming over you, it's just gonna beat on you. And so rather than having it weigh on you for months on end, what's $1? You can't even buy a coffee for a dollar. You can't buy, you can't buy a shirt for a dollar. You can't buy breakfast for a dollar. You can't Buy, buy water for a dollar. Maybe, maybe you could buy a pack of gum for a dollar, but that's uh, not in Australia. No, yeah, that's true. I don't No, nope, I think it's, it's over a dollar here. <laughs> so, anyway, point being, you know, what's a dollar in the grand scheme of things? A dollar could change your life. And I know that sounds dramatic and I know it sounds ridiculous, but it really is the start to something great. And mm. it's a dollar. <laughs> so you can't really not justify that. You know, like it's either you believe in yourself and you're willing to chase your dreams or you're too afraid and you're letting fear hold you back. And if you're letting the fear hold you back from spending a dollar, then we've got a whole other issue at hand. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I do agree. <laughs> it is a really, um, yeah, it's an interesting way that people, it's interesting to see the way that people react to just a one dollar thing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But yeah, you've just got to sometimes put your pride away and just put your ego away and just be like, okay, well, let's just have a look. What's the worst case scenario? I'm not going to get, it's not like you get locked into spending millions of dollars. It's not the case. It's like, no, it's a dollar. Yeah. So yeah. it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Miss out on a quarter of your coffee in the morning. <laughs> like, True. <laughs> like that, like that, that's all it is. So definitely, you know, never let the fear hold you back. Yeah. Um, because otherwise you can be missing out on a big life change that you don't even know is waiting for you. And that's, it's pretty cool, you know, yeah. so definitely worth a try. You have nothing to lose and uh, so much to gain. So, mm. yeah. Absolutely. Now, before we do wrap it up, those that are watching and they want to come and check out your blog or come and check you out on social media or anything like that, I'll get you to flick those through to me as well. So I can put it in the descriptions. But just, just rattle them off. What, where can they find you? <laughs> so my blog is the five foot traveler.com five is spelled out and traveler has one L, but Brett will put that below. Um, my Instagram's the five foot traveler. My Twitter is the five foot traveler. Everything is the five foot traveler. So I'll make your life easy. And, uh, I'd love to connect with any of you ask any questions you might have about this and, um, or about blogging. Trust me, I know a lot about blogging. <laughs> um, so you struggling bloggers, we've got we've got a solution for you. We'll save you save you those years of banging your head against a wall. <laughs> so and for, yeah. And I was gonna say for those that are curious about the five foot element, yes, she is five foot, she's a pocket rocket, she's a powerhouse. <laughs> so it's um, yes, it's clear clear understanding as to why you chose that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I was like I know when I was in Hawaii and we were talking and we we're like oh we'll catch up tomorrow and I'm like where's the five foot one <laughs> like, I think I was probably among the shortest people there so <laughs> it worked it worked you spotted me very quickly yes indeed <laughs> <laughs> so all right, well, look, it's been an absolute blessing um thank Thanks you so God. much to have you on um, I appreciate you um being able to you know give me some of your time to, to be able thanks to for having me here. And um, I hope that those that are watching have got some value out of this. And of course, if you're looking at get starting online, I'll put the link below as well. Um, and yeah, you know, that's pretty much it. You know? click, click the link. Come on, yeah. guys. <laughs> Just believe in yourself a little bit. <laughs> exactly right.
Exactly right. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to leave you to uh, whatever it is that you're up to today or this afternoon. <laughs> I can see it's quite interesting as I was just thinking as we were talking rather. You know, as you said, you're in, you know, near New York and the sun's setting and like the sun's just coming through here and I'm like, oh, it's the same sun. Yeah, that, that's I'm, totally true. I like I'm, it. I'm stealing it from you. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, All right. Thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.